Hey y'all, welcome back to Reddit The Wire. Well, as part of our Breeders' Cup Division Series, today we're going to be looking at the Philly and Mare Sprint. So, let's take a look at it. So here's the field for the Philly and Mare Sprint, and you can, obviously, without Echo Zulu, this is a markedly different race. Uh, just a real quick update, the word is that surgery was successful on the sesamoid, and uh, four to six weeks before we know for sure, but it seems to be doing really well right now. A doctor said she's getting up uh, using her casted leg and getting up on her own power which are all really good signs so uh, hope for the best there uh, this makes this race wide open in my opinion I don't really think you've got anybody who's head and shoulders uh, above the rest of the field so it should make for a really good betting opportunity We'll start by looking at horses who were in the ballerina handicap at Saratoga this summer, starting with last year's winner, Goodnight Olive. Uh, Chad Brown and Rod Ortiz, great connections. We know that uh, what she can do uh, won the Breeders' Cup Sprint, Philly Mare Sprint last year. Uh, this year, I think she is a step slow. Uh, she seems to have lost a little zip uh, from last year. I, every race, it seems like she's laboring, working awful hard. To, uh, to get up, and uh, she was no match for Echo Zulu, of course, but then again, I don't think anybody could beat that horse on her best day. Uh, but uh, you, you do have to wonder about that, particularly coming from off the pace. This is a seven furlong race, so it's definitely, uh, the distance works in her favor, but I just think she's just not quite as good as, she, as uh, not quite as sharp as she was last year, and I think that might open the door up for some others. Then we have Madame Rea, and this one always, when it gets to a true grade one, this one always seems to be a hair below the very best. So, with the defection of Echo Zulu and uh, some of the, without a real uh, uh, lock favorite, if you will, in my opinion, that might open the door up for Madame Rea here. And uh, she's always been a really solid horse. She just, you know, unfortunately, she's got Echo Zulu and, and Goodnight Olive last year and horses like that uh, that uh, she just can't quite seem to beat. But I think maybe now this, is, uh, this might be the opportunity uh, to, uh, to take this one down. And then we have Caramel Swirl. The distance really favors, uh, being a seven furlong race, really favors this horse. This one is a cut below the grade one horses. I think this one's more of a grade two or three, but comes from off the pace, and it is seven furlongs, as I mentioned. Uh, Bill Mott on Breeders' Cup Day, you never want to underestimate. So there's a lot of things working uh, tactically in favor of this horse. But ability-wise, I just think she's a little bit below. In my opinion, under is more likely. So let's take a look at the Ballerina Handicap. Here's the Ballerina Handicap from Saratoga. And for reference, Matarea is in number two, Goodnight Olive, number seven, and Caramel Swirl, number eight. They're in the gate. And they're off in the ballerina. And Goodnight Olive. You see, that's a little surprising. Goodnight Olive could be quite she so keen out of the gate Zulu there, but uh, nonetheless already. gets good position. And you see Matarea, uh, a little Matarea slow to get going, but uh, got up on the rail and is able to save ground. And then Caramel Swirl, the customary position towards the rear. I don't know what happened to Mary Quite Contrary. She was a really nice horse, and this seven furlong distance would have set up really well for her in the Philly Mare Sprint, but uh, been a tough year for Shug McGehee. Dr. B in between, and Caramel Swirl inches up on the outside now to take third. You see Goodnight Olive, uh, no excuses. Goodnight Olive, who are heads apart, rounding the far turn. On even terms, good night, Olive on the outside puts her nostrils in Caramel front. Swirl a little Echo more Zulu forward earlier than usual. I was a little Caramel surprised at that. You see Matt Reyes saving one. all the ground. They're at the top of the stretch. Their records nearly identical as they square off once again. Echo Zulu on the inside. And good night, Olive. And good night, one, Olive, you know, giving it all she's got. It's just go. not good enough. And Echo Zulu puts her away. Mm. Darn, she was a special filly. God, she Echo was good. Zulu, most impressive in the ballerina. Good night, Olive was clearly second best. And the Godolphin, close photo for third between Matarea and Caramel Swirl. 120.95 seconds. 
Next grouping is, uh, these are all our California horses, and uh, we have uh, two preps to look at, the Rancho Bernardo as well as the Chillingworth, and uh, we got all four in the Chillingworth, but uh, the Rancho Bernardo, we got Kirsten Bosch and Ida. So uh, Ida is the first we'll talk about. Obviously, with Bob Baffert and Juan Hernandez, you have to uh, take very seriously. This horse just keeps winning, uh, and I have to be honest, uh, this one I kept looking at, and uh, as I've, uh, when I've handicapped at Santa Anita, always seems to be a horse you should try to beat, and she beats you. So, uh, not to be underestimated. However, I think stepping up to grade one company, uh, in this case, may expose some things with her. Uh, I don't know how fast she really is, but uh, she does know how to win. And uh, trained by Bob, Bob Baffert, I think we have to take seriously, especially at Santa Anita. Kirsten Bosch is a stone closer, and so seven furlongs is going to meet her right between the eyes. Uh, just won the Rancho Bernard, or uh, the Chillingworth, uh, in, in in a similar fashion. So, uh, is coming into this race in good form. Uh, I think she's going to need some help to be competitive in this race, but you just might. Uh, being at seven furlongs, and if there is a substantial pace, that would play right into her hands and give her a really good shot. So first one we're going to look at is the Rancho Bernardo, and then we'll take the Chillingworth after we go over uh, the, the, the other two who ran in that. First, we'll look at the Rancho Bernardo, and for reference, Kirsten Bash is in post number one on the rail, and Ida, the favorite, is in post number then eight. all set now for the Rancho Bernardo. And away they go. Princess Adelaide was off just a tad awkward. See, Eda's off just Edith fine, and Krista Bosch taking to the rear Adelaide as usual. Princess Adelaide now going quickly to take the lead, though, between them. Violent runner. We come back to home cooking in a good spot in fourth. Lady T is now seven off the leaders, then muted, and Kirsten Bosch is last ten off them. They run to the half mile pole, and Princess Adelaide leads it by a length. The closers Eater always at right a disadvantage, particularly spot, at uh, uh, Delmar and Santa Anita. Their smaller tracks the turns are tighter, and uh, they do favor early speed. So you always have to keep that in mind when handicapping. But uh, the seven furlong sprint distance does help the, uh, the closers Princess quite a bit. So. Uh, Ida is coming out Maybe we can uh, reevaluate from that Home perspective. Still not been asked to run not yet. tossing Violent immediately, in other words. Out. Then back to Kirsten Bosch, Lady see Kirsten T Bosch tipping out. Top of the lane, and now got Ida plenty of horse. to take on Princess Adelaide. Princess Adelaide at the rail. Ida and there's Ida right, right there. Alongside. Carried out Home wide, though. Now getting going from third. Kirsten Bosch running on late. But it's Ida who gets but the lead. But it's her race, so she's clear. just raided and uh, running on. put this they field away. Home now, and Ida just knows stopping her this is seven straight she comes home an easy Kirsten winner. Bosch Ida close well Kirsten Bosch a very good second no nope, no nope was getting to her a little bit ADT. though next couple we'll look at are uh clearly unhinged and elm drive and you see clearly unhinged trained by Mike McCarthy a very underrated trainer uh I, I like Mike McCarthy and uh uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he throws a, uh, a, a surprise in the Breeders' Cup somewhere. Uh, you got Umberto Rispoli aboard, excellent jockey. And uh, this one's got uh, got some nice earnings there, so I think we can pay attention to this one. Uh, it has been on the upswing lately, and uh, usually maybe a hair below uh, some of the better grade one horses. But again, this is the kind of field uh, where uh, I think a lot of horses are going to get elevated, and clearly unhinged just might be one of them. And then we'll look at Elm Drive. Uh, Little Red Feather Stable uh, has been a, a stalwart on, in, well, on the West Coast for a long time. I can go all the way back to 2004 with Singletary, who won the uh, uh, Breeders' Cup uh, sprint for me, and I was happy about that. Uh, Phil D'Amato trains, and uh, you see uh, this one has a lot of, uh, it's either all or nothing, it seems like, from the starts. You either get a win or you get something else. Uh, but... Uh, uh, was in the Chillingworth Stakes, and uh, um, again, Phil D'Amato's record speaks for itself, so you don't have to, uh, uh, you, maybe we don't want to completely uh, discount. So let's take a look at the Chillingworth Stakes. So this is the Chillingworth Stakes, and for reference, clearly unhinged is in the one hole on the rail. Kirsten Bosch is number three. 
Elm Drive is number four, and Ida is number five. And uh, this is in Spanish, so again, uh, for those of you who do speak Spanish, enjoy the call. And if you don't, just enjoy the race. So here we go. Pretty level start. Elm Drive kind of keen to get up there. And clearly in his a little slow to get going, but uh, also uh, contesting the pace. You see Kirsten Bosch customarily at the back as usual. And Ida rating right off the leaders. El drive está en la punta, se le viene colando el uno por la baranda. Entre ellas aparece Hong Cooking, Ida está en el cuarto lugar. And you get the feeling that uh, with all these keen on the lead, that maybe they had a feeling Ida was going to be a little off today. And I, I remember handicapping this and, and thinking the same, that uh, this was the day maybe you want to get, you can beat Ida. You see, she's making her, making her turn wide. At this point, it looks like clearly on his race. It is uh, not quite carrying on as well, flattening out. But a, a half and 43 and 3 is going to burn any horse out. And you see Kirstenbosch set up perfectly with a nice big close. Six and a half furlongs and 115 is pretty damn good on dirt. Next we'll look at is our Florida shipper, Three Witches. And as I mentioned uh, previously in other postings, uh, Florida horses have been uh, have not been up to par the last couple of years. Uh, it used to be that they were really, uh, you could make a lot of money with them ship, uh, shipping to other markets. But uh, they just seem to be a little off uh, the last couple of years. And uh, uh, Three Witches, to me, is, is you know, won the Princess Rooney. And we're going to look at that in a second. Uh, trained by Safi Joseph, you got Leonel Reyes, really nice jockey. He's like the upset king, the long shot king down at uh, Gulfstream. But as we know, Safi Joseph doesn't necessarily ship great, um, and uh, uh, I'm not sure that we uh, we can count on this one to be really competitive in this race. But let's look at the Princess Rooney, and uh, maybe we'll feel otherwise. So here's the Princess Rooney, and Three Witches is in the five hole. And they're off in the Princess Rooney. From the far outside, Poyama begins very nicely and she'll quickly establish the early pace from our Adios Jersey, who's beat to the punch well second. Is going to read about Down mid -pack. inside, Olivia Darling is now third from Bluefield in fourth. Out wide on the course in Rosie's Halo, in between horses, three witches. Second last is Flakes and Luca Panici, and the favorite, Mary Quite Contrary, last of all, while way out in the yeah, center. Mary Quite Contrary, I did. Quarter. Just really, just don't know what happened to that horse. But, uh, Poyama struts her speed. She's uh, a length and a half. I'd love her in the. If she came back to form. I'd Jason love her in the filling man spring and seven furlongs being Blue a closer. Blue in traffic with stable mate three witches and outside Rosie's halo. It's a length and a half to Flakes and still at the back Flakes is, is another one contrary. who's uh, three furlongs to go. showed some promise Diana and just really away, hasn't, uh, didn't do much in this race either. So you had some vulnerable chalk. And look at, look at everybody who's up top except for our Adios jersey. They're all double digit odds. Mary quite contrary. And she's in high gear and loops up six wide through a 44 and one opening half mile. Off the turn and the stretch drive on the far outside. Mary, quite contrary, asked for yeah, her best just, stuff by Luca Panici, but the leader kind of is three witches. Out a little bit. Eighth of a mile out, three witches You're is in front. All right. Mary, quite contrary, trying to pick her up. Sixteenth to go, three witches driven out. Mary, quite contrary, running out of time. No, Here's the wire. It's three witches to win the Princess Rooney. Second was Mary, quite contrary, close after that. Yeah, she's just really a disappointing year. She, I think she should have won that race. But anyway, Three Witches got the win at seven furlongs. So uh, knows the distance. We can say that. Next one we'll talk about is Society. Is trained by Steve Asperson. Um, and this one is uh, wicked fast. I mean, she's just got a ton of early lick. Um, kind of an all or nothing horse, though. If you look at a record there, seven wins and then out of 11 but uh if she's not if she doesn't get things her way uh she can be beaten the thing is though in this race uh she may be the lone speed and may be able to get off and she's just got such uh early kick 
uh, might be able to control things. Maybe, uh, you know, it could be one of those scenarios. Nobody wants to go out and, and, uh, and get her. And she could just walk on the lead and get away with it. Uh, it's very possible. Uh, you, we've seen her around two turns uh, where she's not as effective, but that stamina does help at the seven furlong distance. We're going to look at the pink ribbon stakes uh, from Charlestown. That's her last race, but I noted a couple others here. And you can see the Chicago stakes. That's a grade three. And then the La Troyenne, um, that's the kind of race where, you know, she gets onto the lead. And if there's other uh, quality horses who can push her, uh, a lot of times that uh, that she can't handle it. She can't, she can't stay in there. So a little something to note about her, but let's take a look at the pink ribbon stakes. So here's the pink ribbon stakes at uh, Charlestown. And uh, for reference, a small field, but society is number seven. And they're off in the misty minute. Pink ribbon stakes and, and away you go. And no surprise. We know what society wants to do right to the lead. It just has wicked fast uh, speed. And. Uh, but she's kind of all or nothing. It really depends on the class. And this is a field she obviously should beat. And uh, going around those tight turns in a bull ring there at Charlestown. And Frank's Rockette's no slouch either. Kind of surprised uh, she's not running in the uh, Philly and Mare Sprint. May have retired. I don't know. Comment if you if you have uh, any uh, understanding. And society's pretty much just kind of had enough. Those are real, those are pretty soft fractions for her to get on, and they're not going to beat her when uh, she can get control things on the lead. Tyler Gaffleyone sitting chilly now goes to work on society and she moves away to a three now a four link lead and it's another front running score on the Charlestown over and see she kicks it into society. gear and forget it she romps home by five from Frank's Rockettes and then Hardy Constitution a little slow for seven furlongs but she didn't have to crank it so uh society definitely one we want to watch out for I think who's your Philly was on the tip of a lot of people's tongues uh for uh, three year, for a champion three-year-old earlier in the year after a really nice two-year-old campaign. But to say the least, this one has been a disappointment. I uh, feel bad for my friend Tom Amos. I think, know he's really excited about this one. But uh, as often is the case for the two-year-olds moving to three, sometimes they just don't progress. And I think this is a case of that. Um, they're trying to cut this one back. And I think it's more just trying to find a place for this one uh, to be competitive. Uh, two turns has been uh, mixed this year. Uh, mainly, you know, it seems that she's most effective when she can get on the lead. But uh, you'd have to think with society in the Philly and Mary Sprint, that's going to be awful difficult uh, for Hoosier Philly to, uh, to be competitive trying that tactic. Uh, however, uh, she will be moving from two turns to one, and route to sprint is a great angle. Uh, so seven furlongs, maybe she's got the stamina to hang in there. Uh, just ran in the Cotillion Stakes, and that was a two-turn race, uh, but will give us a little feel for uh, perhaps what her form's looking like coming into the Philly Mare Sprint. So let's take a look at it. So here's the Cotillion Stakes, and as you can see, Hoosier Philly is number four. And it was a sloppy that day at Parks. And you see who's your filly uh, trying to get up uh, up near the lead with defining purpose to her right. I'm pretty mischievous right in about mid-pack there. And the uh, ceiling crusher uh, I really liked in this race and uh, was uh, uh, made my wallet feel a lot better when she came in. And just Catherine is the early trailer. Ceiling Crusher. She has a length over long shot, Majestic Creed, through an opening quarter, 23 and 1. Ceiling Crusher, Majestic Creed. And just rating. Trying third. to uh, She's about three off the front not let Ceiling, ceiling Crusher, Crusher get away. Finding purpose in Monra. Foggy Knight holding her position at the rail, right in between horses, pretty mischievous, then just Catherine, followed by a cult. And as they make their way down the backstretch, splashing along, ceiling pressure, maintaining that advantage, Majestic Creed, keeping her company still just a length off of her. Then it's Hoosier Philly. Foggy Nights moved up. See, Biden her time. Uh, moving right with her pretty but you can see ceiling crusher. It looks like it's got plenty of horse. And here's Hoosier Philly going to try to rein her in. 
but uh, it's kind of a fait accompli. She's uh, got good position and plenty of horse. You see, he has, Ceiling Crusher, they haven't even let her out yet, so who's your filly's uh, open rein there? She's all out and just, just not enough. Close, closed okay, but uh, she's going to have to do a lot better than that, particularly in a sprint. And Desert Dawn is another one, I think, they're trying to find a place where this one can be competitive. Uh, has been running in sprints as well as two turns, but uh, uh, cutting back to this distance, I think, might give this one a chance to be a little more effective. Of course, going to have the home advantage at Santa Anita. And uh, Phil D'Amato, we, you know, more, more known for turf, but uh, he can get him going on tur uh, dirt as well. He's a good trainer. And you do get Umberto Rispoli, who's a really nice jockey. Uh, we're going to take a look at the Zenyatta stakes and uh, as the last race to give an idea of uh, what kind of form we can expect from Desert Dawn. So here's the Zanyata stakes and as you can see a small field and uh, a lot of these are kind of hard to evaluate and it's a two-turn race as well uh, but it is the last one and get an idea what kind of form. Again route to sprint not, uh, is a great angle and uh, I love uh, two-turn horses cutting back to sprints and uh, sometimes you can get uh, they can that can pick them up a little bit so uh, you see Desert Dawn rating about third and these smaller fields this becomes more like a match race and so uh, uh, you're gonna get uh, horses who have to uh, put in perhaps a little bit more effort than normal they they can't relax uh, quite as readily so you see uh, Desert Desert Dawn, just uh, Desert Dawn, rather, just uh, saving ground. Uh, Going to be tough to beat a Dare Manor here, uh, but who opens up a two-length advantage? Now it's almost three on MicroShare second. Desert Dawn is at the rail, window shopping three deep. A Dare Manor left alone on the front end, coming to the half-mile pole with a three-length advantage. Desert Dawn along the inside, window shopping. And in between those two, micro share. No change in the running order. Coming to the three eighth pole, it's been all Adair Manor. Adair Manor by herself in front by. And this two is and the kind of horse, Desert Dawn, that sometimes Dawn. can and come out of nowhere in uh, in the Heading sprints. The uh, just because I mean, she's Adair got the stamina uh, to withstand uh, any heavy pace and whatnot, being a router. So a uh, little something to think about. You certainly have to have a price and hasn't won this year. But uh, uh, if you're looking for a price, sometimes this is the kind of horse that flies under the radar. You see, no match for a dare manner, but uh, he's keeping on well. And... Uh, no need to keep on. No going to be second. So it forms halfway decent coming into the Breeders' Cup. And finally, we have our Japanese import, McKay Yell. And, <coughs> excuse me, you can see this one's kind of an all or nothing as well. Seven wins out of 17 starts and no one the money finishes other than that. But it does have $2.8 million in earnings. So I think this is one maybe we want to take seriously. Just ran in the sprinter stakes, and that was a 16-horse field and got fifth. Um, so uh, maybe, you know, the Japanese, awful dangerous, uh, particularly internationally, they've been uh, really strong. So uh, this one uh, hasn't been the greatest this year, but I certainly wouldn't want to underestimate them uh, given their track record in the rest of the world. So let's take a look at the sprinter stakes. So this is the sprinter stakes, and note this is on turf, and it is a right-handed turn as well. Uh, 16 horse field, Mecca Yell is number eight. Sprinter stakes, 16 to run. Number of clear, the favorite. They're set, they're See, ready. Right by the middle there. Racing in the sprinter stakes, lovely dispatch. They commenced as one. Mama Gets off pretty well. well. And there goes Jasper Crone out wide. Right about and mid pack. And Sparta along the inside. You see this how the, the Japanese do it. They pan across. Out. Jasper Crone shows the front. 
Lee Johnson, Nikkei Yell, right about Bonner, the middle Bozer, there. May, as I mentioned, you see him there in the green and white, third. Then the comes blue Mary cap. Number of Claire is up nice and handy early, but passed by Mama Kocha and May K. Yell. A gap to Pixie Knight, followed by Win Marvel. Then comes Naran Huleg. On Naran Huleg's outside, Looks Dolce Moore. A pretty Moore. good hold Make a Yell there. Uh, all at once, followed all at once is Aguri, well back in the run. Then comes Asian Spotter on its outside is uh, Kimiwa Queen yeah, and keen. the last one see him there out, uh, is, uh, to the outside uh, as they're making the turn as they get to the final corner at the 400 meter pole and in front on the inside traveling quite well is Jasper Crone Mama Kocha starts to chime in as well Make a, not Yell is quite there as keeping well. up flattening Crone, out a little Mama bit Kocha but uh, Jasper Crone are doing battle the swoopers are hanging in there though, nonetheless Claire is one of them and through the middle is Mad Cool Jasper Crone the inside through the middle is Mad Cool Mad Cool gets up and it's tight they hit the wire very close maybe not maybe bad. Mama Kocha the jockey thinks so Mad Cool Almost forgot about Yu Yu Geary, and uh, she is our uh, the final uh, one we're going to look at. Uh, trained by Rodolphe Brousset and Flavian Pratt. Uh, this one, again, uh, is another one that has two-turn uh, stamina as well as sprinter speed. So very versatile, and in a seven-furlong race, that really comes in handy. Uh, just had a great effort in the TCA, a duel all the way down the stretch with a wicked halo and uh, pulled it off. I didn't think she could get there, but she did. And uh, so she's coming to this race in pretty good effort. The only thing I'd say is when you have a, uh, a real monster effort like that, sometimes there is a bit of a letdown, especially when you're jumping up in class uh, like you will, uh, you, you, Gary, will in the Philly and Mare sprint. So let's take a look at the TCA. So and here's the TCA, and where they go. For Be Like Water, who broke in Be the like air, Water, big, big hop there. And you see Yu Yu Geary out to the right there in the uh, blue and yellow. Wicked Halo, away close up third Wicked down, Halo right out off to the uh, side. I'm really surprised Wicked Halo is not in this race, and uh, um, I'm not aware of uh, any problems or whatnot. So if there is an update, please let me know. The lead as they head on to that far turn. Happy Soul and Yu Geary go one, two, separated by just a neck. The opening. So Gary's in really in good position. Seconds. Wicked Halo, his third against the rail. Length See Wicked Halo open range all out already. Changing lengths. Here's Wicked Halo switching off the rail toward the outside. Just over a quarter mile to go. Happy Soul, you Gary. Wicked you Gary's Halo, got one, two, three. got a little more horse, I think. Fire, fire that proved uh, to make a difference uh, uh, in this one. Up to challenge you, Gary. See, here we go. Wicked Halo and you Gary going at it, coming into the final furlong. Last Wicked game, Halo was awful away. game, and I thought and she had the race at this fourth. point. Happy Soul drops back along the rail. Wicked Halo, a narrow lead. You Gary fights on though. You Gary fighting back. Really big effort coming back like that. Wicked Halo and you see just by a nose. Pretty awesome effort. So here are the top prospects for the Philly and Mare Sprint. Uh, Good night, all obviously one to consider last year's winner. Uh, is in uh, I think is in as as good a form as she can be. I just don't think. Uh, I think she's lost a step, and I think that opens a lot of uh, a lot of possibilities up. Uh, Yu Yu Geary, of course, uh, is one that's coming in the race in, in very good form, and again another one with versatility who has stamina as well as uh, sprinter speed. So I think that holds uh, very well in these type of seven furlong races. Society, we know what uh, she wants to do. She's going to get on the lead. Has gone around two turns, so seven furlongs has won at the distance. And uh, we'll just have to see how much they press her. Uh, but if they do, maybe her prospects aren't as good. But she could easily get on the lead, control the pace, and be gone if nobody's, uh, everybody's afraid to go try to get her. Uh, clearly unhinged is one that uh, perhaps will will uh, will be tr either trying to get the lead um, and uh, maybe you know society if, if uh, she's not on the lead maybe is not as effective and that might be a tactic who knows but uh, I think clearly unhinged of the California horses looks pretty good to me. Uh, Kirsten Bosch being a dead closer, you of course have to consider. Uh, problem is, betting wise, everybody's going to be thinking about that. Uh, however, it's still very possible and one you have to consider. 
Uh, Madame Rhea, uh, just on the class more than anything else, I think this race may set up really well for her, uh, uh, particularly with Good Night Olive. I don't think being at her optimum, and uh, we'll have to deal with you, you Gary. But I think Madame Rhea, this might be a really good spot for her. And then finally, Caramel Swirl, I think is more a candidate for under. Uh, this horse does love seven furlongs and does come from off the pace, but has always proven to be a kind of a cut below grade one horses, uh, but I think is one we have to consider. Couple I haven't uh, put on here, but I think are worth noting just for bomb's sake is Meike Yell, uh, just because Japanese and and uh, don't want to underestimate, uh, and then Desert Dawn, uh, another one with stamina, with uh, uh, is coming in off a two turn effort, and is just going to be such a ridiculous price if everything falls apart. That's the kind of horse that can uh, can make you a really nice score just something to think about if you're looking for a bomb so that's the philly and mare sprint i think it's going to be a really contentious race uh so there should be some really nice betting opportunities there uh hope our analysis helps you with your own pregame strategy as always of course and uh We'll have more postings uh, as we make our way to the Breeders' Cup, so be on the lookout for those. If you do like content like this, of course, please like and subscribe, and we do thank you for coming by. Uh, that's it from here. I'll talk to you soon, and until then, be well.